Today we're going to talk about two terms that sound almost identical but mean two very different things. The f-stop and the t-stop. My name is Timothy Reese, and I've worked in the television, film, and photography world as a director of photography and a photographer for nearly 20 years. Check out my videos as we cover not only the how, but also the why of various technical and creative techniques used in the creation of real images. If you work in both cinematography and photography, you've probably noticed that lenses might use either f-stops or t-stops. So what's the difference and why does it matter? Well, let's start with the f-stop because that's the number you're most likely already familiar with. The f-stop is a mathematical ratio, specifically the focal length of the lens divided by the diameter of the entrance pupil. This is something we've discussed at length on my channel, but here's something new. This number tells us how much light should theoretically pass through the lens based purely on geometry. An f-stop only tells you the potential amount of light passing through the lens, not the actual amount that makes it to your camera's sensor. In a perfect world, light would pass through a lens unimpeded. No loss, no diffusion, no reflection or refraction. But in reality, every piece of glass, every element, every coating inside your lens absorbs or reflects a small amount of light. The more complex the lens, the more potential there is for that loss. So even though two lenses might both say f2.8, one might actually be transmitting more light to the sensor than the other. The difference can be small with a prime lens, but grows as the complexity of the lens increases. That's where the t-stop comes in. The t in t-stop stands for transmission. Where the f-stop is a calculated ratio, the t-stop is a measured value. It represents the actual amount of light transmitted through the lens. In other words, how much light really is hitting your sensor. Now, if you've ever wondered why a cinema lens might say T 2.8 instead of F 2.8, that's why. This more accurate measurement is important for narrative filmmaking where consistency is everything. If you're shooting a dialogue scene with three different lenses, maybe a 35, a 50, and an 85, you want them to all look consistent. You need every lens to transmit the exact same amount of light. If you're using f-stops, you might find small discrepancies between each lens, which could create guesswork in choosing just the right exposure for all the cameras to match. T-stops eliminate that guesswork. That's why cinema lenses are rated and tested to specific transmission values. A T2.8 on one lens is designed to be the same exact exposure as T2.8 on another lens even if their optical designs are completely different. Now this does come at a cost as the scientific measuring and engineering of these lenses is one reason why cinema glass can be more expensive. That level of accuracy and repeatability is critical when lighting a scene using multiple cameras or color grading shots from different setups. This was very important in the days of film where you didn't have a what you see is what you get kind of monitoring that's available now with digital capture. Many lower budget and independent films are now shot with lenses that only have f-stop values because these adjustments can be made in real time and color correction in post is more flexible now. However, if you have the budget for real cinema glass with t-stops, you can utilize the power of these lenses to eliminate that on-set guesswork or the post-production adjustments. I have experienced these discrepancies on mini shoots where I might be using a 24 to 70 on one camera and a 70 to 200 on another. The complexities of zoom lenses can increase the noticeable effect between two lenses. This is why it's important to have correctly calibrated monitors on your set and use built-in exposure tools to ensure your exposure is matching between multiple cameras, even if your lenses are set to the same f-stop. So if t-stops are so accurate, why don't we use them in still photography? Well, it simply comes down to cost. Measuring transmission accurately takes time and specialized equipment, which increases the manufacturing cost. Photographers can easily adjust exposure on the fly, typically aren't doing simultaneous multi-camera coverage, and the small differences between lenses are often imperceptible or easily corrected in post. On your photo and video shoots, one of the best ways to minimize the differences between f-stop lenses is to stick with the same manufacturer and line or series of lenses so they will have fewer optical differences between them. If you like these videos, please subscribe and feel free to leave a comment about a future video you might want me to make. 
This user feedback really helps me see what users are looking for and ensures I can continue to make helpful and educational videos. Until next time, thanks for watching.